Hi. I'm going to be making a signpost, a hand routed signpost, out of a 6x6 six six rough sawn oak beam. Usually when we make trail signs, we have a, a plank mounted on a beam, but in this case, this is going to be a high vandalism area, and we're just going to use the beam. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Um, to make do this, we're going to need a hand router, safety uh, protection, hearing, hearing protection, face guard, some sort of a square. And what we use for making the lettering and patterns are round point router bits. This is a 3 8 bit that we use for the large letters and a quarter inch round head bit for the small letters. This beam has some checking in it from uh, drying out and it also has a big nasty knot right there. You don't want to hit that knot with the router. It's going to wreak havoc. Uh, but we'll have to just have to deal with the cracks that are the checks in here. So I've checked over the three sides. I'm going to I'm going to use three sides of this, the top and bottom here, and the side you can't see, and I'm going to avoid that piece. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is to cut the top of the beam so that it sheds water. And we'll use a, a 15 degree slope to do that. Using the, uh, the square, I'll just set it for 15 degrees, come down a little bit so that I miss the irregularity at the end of the point, of the end of the post, and I'll mark that. So now I'm going to get my uh, chainsaw and just take that off and that's what I'll show you next. You know, looking at the surfaces of this thing, um, I had decided to add another step. When you route, use a router on a rough surface like this, it tends to hang up on these checks. It's, this beam is so uneven that uh, I've decided to uh, actually sand uh, the top a couple feet of this just to give myself a flat surface to uh, route on. So to do that, I'm going to add one other thing. That is dust mask in addition to your basic belt sander with some nice uh, coarse sandpaper on it. Okay, now I've got it sanded and it's time to move on to the layout of the sign. And what I've done is I've sanded three sides. The side with the knot is going to be away from the trail. The trail is going to run, this is going to be standing up right alongside the trail. The trail is going to be here. The way I'm going to lay out this sign is each of the oncoming sides is going to have a three inch round trail marker uh, at the top and then it's going to have the trail name which is going to be three words uh, Hyde Park Trail um, on each side so as you come at the uh, at the sign you'll see that on the side facing the trail I'm going to lay out my directions two in this case FDR in one direction the home of Franklin Roosevelt and in the other direction two the Vanderbilt Mansion, but I'm just going to use Vanderbilt. So on this side I'm going to need a lot of lines, uh, probably one inch high letters, uh, routed with a quarter inch round bit. And on these two sides I'm going to try to use our regular trail standard of one and a half inch high letters with a three eighths inch round bit uh, to put the trail name on there. So next I'll move on to layout. Okay, what I've done here is to start laying out uh, my sign. That's um, first just for spacing. Our trail, standard trail specs uh, call for us to leave about five inches at each end of a, a standard board trail sign, either to put a marker or to make a 90 degree arrow cut um, on the end of the sign. In this case, we don't have a plank. But we're going to leave that same five inches for a round marker that will go right up here. This is going to be the side of the sign that you approach as you're walking along the trail. And the most important information here uh, is the marker and the trail name. And what I've done is I've laid out five inches there. I've laid out an inch and a half for my lettering. I've tried to doodle that in uh, with about a three-eighths inch uh, letter thickness. I should say that if you have a 
router stencil. You are very lucky. I've never had one, so I've been doing this by hand for 30 years or something on and off. But uh, that's what we're going to try to do. So what I've done is inch and a half letters, about a half inch in between each line. Again, inch and a half for these letters, Hyde Park Trail. Next, we'll uh, take a break, put on our gear, and try to route that out. Okay, now to move on with the router. Um, one of our volunteers that does this kind of thing says it's real easy to hand route signs. He says it's just like doing brain surgery while holding a screaming, um, clawing wildcat. So, you know, the, the router has a whole lot of torque. We're going to be working in oak, white oak, which is a, a real hardwood. There are checks in it. Everything is going to be trying to grab the router bit and move it away from you. So you need to be very controlled, have a real tight grip on the router. Um, I've got a round bit in there. It sticks out just enough. I'm going to make a round, a rounded hole in here. And we're not going to paint these uh, letters. We're just going to allow the shadow line to, uh, to highlight the letters. But how to get started? You know, we're plunging into the into the wood. What I'm going to be doing is starting the router, uh, tipped up in the air, and then very carefully dropping it, lowering it down with one end of the router hitting the wood. I'm looking in this end, and I can see my lines, and I'm going to be following it that way, lifting it in, dropping it back, uh, uh, lifting it down in, uh, pulling it back out for each letter. So that's what we're going to try to do. Um, again, I've got face guard, hearing protection, everything like that on. You really don't want to get yourself hurt or impair your hearing by doing this. Okay, here again, I've laid out the opposite side of the sign. You can see the bevel's the, wrong, uh, the opposite direction from the way it was before. On this side, I've again laid out uh, about five inches to allow for a three inch round trail marker here. An inch and a half for height for the letters, an inch, half inch in between, inch and a half for letters, half inch in between, inch and a half. One thing I should say is before you get the router going, always double check your spelling. It's amazing what can get by you while you're just you know, doodling out the letters. Maybe you can even see um, what it looks like in, uh, in pencil, but I should say, too, once you get the router going and, and it bites in the wood, starts to grab the grain and move around, um, all bets are off. You're just kind of winging it uh, freehand from that point uh, on. And you just try to, uh, I just try to eyeball the letter spacing. Um, depending on what happens with the router. Some of these spaces are pretty tight and you'll see what that looks like at the end. In some places the uh, letters fall right inside the checks and that's kind of a challenging area. The router bit tries to grab in the edges of those uh, cracks or checks in the wood. But I've got it sanded and it's pretty well behaved. So let's see how the rest goes. Hey, remember what I said about checking your spelling and things like that? Well, I made a mistake and uh, I, I screwed up one letter here and uh, had to, uh, uh, I just had to get out my little eraser, a uh, little hand planer to uh, take off those letters. So uh, now I got to uh, lay out my, uh, my lines again and, and uh, start over and redo those letters. I've just planed down that side of the uh, board a little bit to give myself a clean slate.
I just want to make a couple notes about technique, how, how I'm doing this. Uh, one thing is I always start from the top of the letter. Um, I tip the, the router down and pull it toward me. Actually, when I'm actually doing it, I'm typically uh, bracing one arm uh, at least right against the, the wood. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, using this arm as a, uh, as a stable point and I'm just sort of creeping the, the router toward me. And I, I, at the bottom of each line, I pick it up, go back up to the top of the next letter, uh, pull it toward me again. On the H, you know, I'll, I'll do two letters, uh, two sides like that, and then I'll go back and drop in again to do the cross bar. Same thing on the Y, start at the top, pull it down toward the bottom. And then I'm, I'm showing off a little bit here. I'm putting serifs on the letters, and that actually, it's, it actually makes, it's, it's actually easier to do, I think, than making square letters. Uh, when you get to the end of the letter, you just kind of jiggle the router back and forth and give yourself uh, a nifty little serif there. Uh, so this, uh, this panel is pretty much recovered. What I'll do at, when I'm done with all of these is I'll just put the belt sander on it very quickly and knock all this fuzz off of it and also take off the pencil lines. But uh, uh, this will clean up reasonably well. Okay, now that I've routed the trail name on the, the other two sides of the sign, now it's time to uh, route the uh, directional side. For this section, I've gone to, we have more letters, so I've gone to a smaller size. These are one inch letters, again, a half inch space in between, uh, one inch, half inch, one inch, and then a directional arrow. Then I've allowed some space to separate these two messages. This one, this is to the FDR home. Uh, this is to the Vanderbilt estate. Uh, same spacing, arrow the opposite direction. So you're going to be standing in the trail here, looking at the sign. The trail will be coming from both sides. A couple problems we've got. The checks on this side, uh, the cracks in the wood, are terrible. So they really disrupt the letters. And that's going to be a real challenge. The other uh, problem is that there are way too many letters in the word Vanderbilt. I suppose you can solve that by some misspelling, but it's just not going to work for us. So I had a couple of choices. I could do something like two van der built estate. That just seemed too broken up. This is going to be very tight. I've spaced it out uh, and you can see my eraser marks. I've tried it a couple different ways, but I'm just going to uh, get the router bit into the wood and, and see, uh, see how that plays out. Um, one difference for this is uh, on for these smaller letters I'm going to uh, a quarter inch router bit. I use only carbide bits even though they're more expensive they just don't burn up as quickly and they do a, a better job working in a, a hardwood like like oak um, I think that might work let's try it okay here's the result of that last part it's not optimal it's not the best but here's how it worked um, the top part is pretty much okay pretty legible uh, I managed to avoid that check here. Arrow came out okay. This part gave me trouble. Uh, there are three, four check lines in here, cracks in the wood. Uh, this is, was turned out to be too many letters and uh, it got too tight. I got messed up, especially with the D and this, uh, this check here. Managed to fit the N, N into that uh, check and hide it a little bit. Uh, this T again didn't work out that well. Same thing down here. A little bit too tight in the lettering. I suppose I could have erased it, but this sign is, uh, is complete now. I've got lettering on both sides. If I were to plane down this top side to wipe out these letters, I'd be crashing into the letters that I've already put on these two sides. So I chose not to do that. And uh, I think we'll just call it handmade and therefore naturally a thing of beauty the letters are uh, rough a little bit funky shaped uh, but that's what you get with hand styled uh, uh, router lettering um, but mainly it's just fun to do so this is uh, I'll just sand this up a little bit and this will be ready to uh, 
install on the trail in the ground next Saturday. So to finish this up, we'll just give this a very light lick with the belt sander and uh, and clean up that uh, that rough edge. Okay, just a light, light sanding. I may go along with a little bit of hand sandpaper to finish cleaning up those edges. Put a little chamfer on the edges to round it off. And we're done.